students how are you all i am sure you might be finding the play the merchant of venice quite interesting now as you have understood the main plot and know the main characters of the play in the scene 7 of act 2 we are not now brought back to belmont in portia's house will the prince of morocco approaches to make the right choice so act 2 scene 7 at page number 90 The scene takes place in a room in Portia's house with the flourish of cornets entering along with Portia with Prince of Morocco and they are entering along with their respective followers. So Portia tells the attendants to draw aside the curtains and discover and to show the different caskets to the Prince of Morocco. Then she requests Morocco to make his choice. Morocco reads the inscriptions now he examines the inscriptions on each of the casket and tries to interpret them before choosing one of them so first inscription he reads the first of gold casket of gold has the following inscription he says whosoever chooses me shall gain what many men desire the second one silver has the inscription whosoever chooses me shall get as much as he deserves the third one he Uh, exclaim is the dull lead casket so he calls lead casket as a dull lead casket with a warning the inscription written seems to him as a warning so with warning all as blunt very plain blunt inscription written on it he says who he reads who chooses it me must give an hazard all he hath how shall i know if i do choose the right he questions himself after reading all the inscriptions at this portia says the one of them contains my picture prince if you choose that then i am yours with all with all means i become yours along with it morocco of course has to make the choice so he wish he wishes him that some god direct him for the judgment some god direct him to choose the right casket then he reads the caskets inscription written on the caskets again he says let me see i will survey the inscriptions back again i will inspect the inscriptions once again but in reverse order what says this leaden casket who chose it me must give an hazard all he hath so what is on the lead casket he says whosoever chooses me must give and risk all that he has must give for what for lead hazard for lead he asks himself must give must give for what what in return take a risk for lead casket he says this casket threatens this casket threatens the people it is that men that hazard hall all they do it in hope of fair advantages men who risk everything they do so in hope of a great reward and do it in hope of fair advantage means they do it for the hope of a great reward a golden mind stoops not to shows of dross he says a noble mind never stoops never bends low to worthless things i will then not give nor hazard aught for lead therefore he says i will not give anything nor risk anything then he comes to the next casket he says what says the silver with a virgin hue he questions himself who chose it me shall get as much as he deserves as much as he deserves he again exclaims as much as he deserves pause there morocco wait there hold on morocco and weigh thy value with an even hand and judge your worth with an even hand impartial view you judge yourself with impartial view if do best rated by thy estimation do dost deserve enough if you are judged by your own own standard then your merits may be very high and yet enough may not extend so far as to the lady but yet he says may not be sufficient to win the fair lady who is the fair lady portia and yet to be afraid of my deserving were but a weak disabling of myself and yet he says yet to be assured of what i deserve is a sign of weakness which would bring discredit on myself or which may work against my chances of winning the lady as much as i deserve 
Why? That's the lady. He says, what? Again, he, he exclaims, as much as I deserve. What does it mean? Why? I deserve the lady only. And how does he deserve the lady? I do in birth deserve her. Now he is explaining that in what sense he deserved the lady. He says, well, that must be the lady herself that I deserve. And I deserve her because of my royal birth and in fortunes, my wealth, in graces, my virtues, in qualities of breeding, my upbringing. But more than these, in love I do deserve. But because above all of these, I deserve her due to the love I have for her. What if I straight no further but choose here? Now he questions himself. What if I don't go further but choose this casket? Which casket? Silver casket. But then he changes his mind. He says, let's see once more this saying graved in gold. What is written or what is inscription? What inscription is engraved on the gold casket? Let me read once again. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. Whosoever chooses me will gain what many men desire. Why? That's the lady. All the world desires her. Whom? All the world desires. Why? How does he know that? Because from the four corners of the earth they come. Who comes? All the suitors. They come from the four corners of the earth. To do what? To kiss this shrine. Now what is this shrine here? This shrine means Portia's house in Belmont. This mortal breathing saint. And who is the saint living here? Whose shrine is it? The saint is Portia herself in human form. The Hyperion deserts and the vasty wilds of wide Arabia are as thoroughfares now for princes to come view fair Portia. And what have they made? The Persian deserts and the vast wilderness. Hyperion deserts means the Persian, old Persian deserts. Okay? And the vasty wilds means the vast wilderness of vast Arabia are as thoroughfares. As uh, through fears, through fears means they are the they have become the highways for the princes coming to see fear Portia. The watery kingdom, whose ambitious head spits in the face of heaven. The watery kingdom means the oceans, whose ambitious head, whose fierce waves spits in the face of heaven. They throw up water to the heavens. There is no bar to stop the foreign spirits. They are not a hurdle to stop the suitors from abroad. But they come as over a brook. How are they coming along with? So they, they come as if they were crossing a stream to visit fear Portia. So these oceans are just like crossing a stream for them. Okay. So. One of these three contains her heavenly picture. Now he again contemplates. Okay, So he says one of these three caskets contains her heavenly picture, divine image. Isn't like that lead contains her? So he questions, is it possible that lead casket has it? It were damnation to think so base a thought. But that at the very next moment, he negates the thought by saying that it would be bad to think so low a thought. It were too gross. It would be too low. To rib her sear cloth in the obscure grave. Why? Because it is an ordinary metal even to contain her winding sheet when she is put into the dark grave. Okay? Or shall I think in silver she is immured? Being ten times undervalued to tried gold? Then he questions himself, shall I think that she is locked, immured is locked up in the silver casket, which is, how many times? Which is only a tenth of the worth of pure gold. But then he negates this thought also by saying, oh, sinful thought, that it is a wicked thought. Never so rich a gem was set in worse than gold. 
then he himself reiterates he takes a stand and he says such a rich gem was never set in anything less than gold then he gives an example he relates it to something they have in england a coin that bears the figure of an angel stamped in gold he says they have in england a gold coin which has the figure of an angel carved in gold and stamped on it but that's inscribed upon he says but that is actually inscribed upon it but here an angel in an in a golden bed lies all within but here what is the difference but here an angel lies enclosed in a golden casket and he has made his choice so he asks for a key asks for the key for the golden casket he said deliver me the key here i choose the casket here do i choose and try by as i may and he wishes that here i choose the casket whatever may be my chances of success at this poshya says dear take it prince she gives the keys and if my form lie there if my picture is inside then i am yours and morocco opens the golden casket he unlocks the golden casket but what does he find over there he when he unlocks the casket he finds a skull inside with a scroll in its empty eye and what is his reaction morocco says oh hell what have we here what do we see here a carrion death a dead skull within whose empty eye hollow eye socket there is a written scroll there is a roll of paper i will read the writing on which something is written and i will read it then he reads whatever is written on it so what is written all that glitters is not gold children when morocco has made this choice it seems that morocco lacks the courage to risk anything for the sake of love so he rejects the lead casket his self centered attitude makes him reject the silver casket also and therefore it seems that prince of morocco is dazzled by the shine of gold and mistakes outward appearance for inner worth thus appearances it shows can be deceptive and love cannot be won without sacrificing morocco fails to understand this and therefore fails to win portia now this is what is exp- read uh, this is what is written over here what is written in the scroll also all that glitters is not gold often have you heard that told often you have heard that said by people many a man his life hath sold but my outside to behold behold means to have a look many a man has given life to see the exterior of mine gilded tombs to worms in fold but gold plated tombs what do they have inside worms had you been as wise as bold young in limbs and judgment old if you had been as wise as you are courageous having an experienced judgment in your youthful body then your answer had not been in scrolled fear you well your suit is cold then this would not have been the answer that appeared on the scroll for you so fear well your hopes are dead in cold indeed and labor lost indeed it is a disappoint- disappointment and your labor hard work is lost then farewell heat and welcome frost bid good bye to your love and welcome disappointment so at this he says portia ado good bye i have too grieved a heart he said i i am too sad at heart to to take a tedious leave thus loser's part to bid a more formal farewell a loser should depart in this manner therefore he exit with his train his flourish of cornets the fly with flourish of cornets trumpet sounds at his leaving portia now at this is very happy she remarks at the retreat or she retorts at the retreat of prince of morocco a gentle riddance okay she says a gentle riddance which shows her happiness and relief at the failure of the prince 
This shows her dislikeness for him at the first sight. So what does she say? Draw the curtains, go. She tells the attendants to draw the curtains and tells them to move away from there. She also wishes, let all his complexion choose me so. May every suitor like him make a similar choice. Okay, children. Now with this, we complete scene number 7.